Hi, this is Joseph Anthony of TappingWithMusic.com. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today I'm going to give you uh, a little mini uh, lesson on how I taught place value to my second graders here at the Waldorf School. And uh, even though it is, a, it is a Waldorf School, somewhat of a special setting, you can apply this to your homeschooling uh, situation or even in the public schools um, with some minor variations. So in the Waldorf schools, everything is couched, especially in the younger grades, in stories, in images. That's always first. And it, the stories and images give you something to build on, something to refer to, something to expand and, and uh, use in a, in a drama class or make little plays about or uh, songs, poems, uh, certainly you can draw about it uh, and work with it. So, place value is somewhat of an abstract concept for a second grader. And uh, so the way I did it is I couched it in a, in a larger story about... Um, so, one of the things that happens in Waldorf schools in the second grade is you learn about wisdom figures. Um, some people might call them saints or saintly-like people. Um, in my second grade, we do wisdom figures, wise people from, from all different religions. And it's not to teach religion per se, uh, really at all. It's, it's to just give the students uh, people to emulate, look up to uh, character building, really, um, in, a, in a certain sense. So, I found this old Hindu legend of a man who was a mason. Who, whose job it was to repair the wall of a temple. And he worked his fingers bloody to the bone every day. And the temple he, he was working in had a saint there, a holy man, whose job it was, all, all he did every day was just sit in the lotus position and meditate. All day. And people would come and throw money in, in a basket that, that the, the spiritual teacher had sitting next to him. And the mason, working his fingers to the bone, hardly made any money. And not only that, he had a dilemma. You see, there would be little holes in the wall of the temple, and he would fill those holes with little rocks. And, and I brought in rocks for my students to see and to hold, and this, this mason would put these little rocks, if it were a, a small hole, a really small hole, he'd plug it up with one rock. If it were slightly big, bigger, he'd use ten little rocks to fill that hole. Sometimes fifty or a hundred of these little rocks to fill a hole in the temple wall. Now, of course, this is somewhat of a preposterous story from a mathematical perspective. Poor guy must be a little dim, but that is uh, <laughs> really a side thing. These are second graders and they're mainly thinking of the, the image in general, of a, of, a, of a dear young man who's working hard and has a dilemma in his mind that he can't figure out how to make his job easier. And not only that, he's a bit jealous of his spiritual teacher, who sits there and meditates all day, looking, looking like he's doing nothing, while the mason himself, he works really hard, physically. So one day, one day the mason comes to the temple and says, Dear Master, Teacher, could we switch jobs for a day? I'd like to do your job. You, you seem to just sit there and meditate and pray, and people throw money, lots of money, into your basket, and, and I work my fingers to the bone and make very little money. And, and it's hard. And the spiritual teacher said, of course. Of course we could switch jobs for the day. All you have to do is sit in the lotus position and not move or think about anything. That sounded so easy to the young mason. He readily accepted the challenge and the spiritual teacher did some of the mason work while 
the young man sat and tried to be still. Now, in my particular second grade, um, immediately as I said that, my, my dear second graders asked if they could try it. And uh, <laughs> so, at that point, I let them all sit on the desk and try to be still in the lotus position. And of course, you know, it's a Waldorf school, it is a, it is a private school, and uh, I can do that kind of thing here. So we did that for a few minutes, my dear students and I, and while they sat on the desk, I continued the story. So of course the young man has trouble sitting still, and stilling his mind. And so the spiritual teacher says, I'm going to give you a tool. And the tool is, when you breathe in, think the words, I am peace. And when you breathe out, think the words, thank you. Over and over, I am peace, thank you. And the young man tried that. He sat there in the lotus position, and as he breathed in, thank, or, I am peace, and as he breathed out, thank you. And of course, my students tried that. And uh, they, <laughs> they were all... It was, it was really a sweet moment. And I, I told them, you know, in the middle of the story, I stopped it a bit and I said, you know, and if you're ever in your life where you're having a moment and things are hard or you're feeling upset or confused or, or just want a little extra peace of mind and stillness in your life, you could do that little exercise, that little breathing mantra meditation at any time. You can do it to yourself, or you can do it out loud, you can do it sitting in the lotus position, or you can do it while you walk. And I've since had some parents in my class tell me that their children have gone home and they found them, you know, sitting on the porch. I am peace. Thank you. Which is a wonderful thing for those kids to have the rest of their lives, right? So anyway, back to place value. The young Mason is sitting there and he's having a peaceful thing, his mind is starting to settle and still. And while he gets his mind still, an image comes to him of some gnomes. It's a Waldorf school, so there's always lots of gnomes, especially in the younger grades. And one of the gnomes is named Pouchy Gnome. And Pouchy Gnome has a pouch of ten little rocks. He has a friend whose name is Bucket Gnome, who has a bucket of rocks that are bigger than Pouchy Gnome's rocks. In fact, ten of Pouchy Gnome's rocks makes one of Bucket Gnome's rocks. And Bucket Gnome has a friend next to him named Wheelbarrow Gnome, and his rocks it takes ten of Bucket Gnome's rocks to make one of the Wheelbarrow Gnome's rocks. And that image, after he had enough, I am peace, thank you, the image was so powerful, to, 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 it answered his dilemma. And he was so excited, he woke up from his meditation and thanked the teacher, and of course he said to the teacher, now I know that your work is hard. It is hard to sit still. It is hard to still the mind. You are doing your special work, and I'm doing mine. And of course the spiritual teacher was thrilled with the young man's revelations and realizations. And so, what we did as second graders, I took my dear students outside, and I had them quarry rocks, and we're very blessed to, to have a, a wonderful playground where they can go. And they made piles of little rocks, and they made piles 
of medium-sized rocks for the tens place, and then bigger rocks for the hundreds place. We eventually got to uh, the thousands place, but not in that first lesson. In the first lesson, it was just ones, tens, and hundreds. And after the story was done, and they practiced their little meditation, we started to draw it in our books to act out the story. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of examples in one of my students' uh, lesson books. And you know what? I think I'll do that right now. So here you go. This is one of my students, uh, dear Lucia's uh, image that we drew of the man meditating, the mason meditating. And he's thinking, I am peace. Thank you. And he gets the image of pouchy gnome and bucket gnome and wheelbarrow gnome. And that is the, the initial image that we drew in our book. And uh, the, the children love the story. They love the challenge of being still. And they also love playing with rocks. And uh, as second graders, they still love the idea of gnomes. And the, <laughs> the second picture we did was we took the gnomes out of it. And we, we just had uh, a, a number. We made up a number and 435. And we stretched out the number. There were four hundreds, thirty, there were four hundreds, three tens, and five ones, and we stretched it out, one hundred plus one hundred plus one hundred plus one hundred plus ten plus ten plus ten, and then we wrote out the number. And the third picture we did uh, for that, um, we eventually did make the thousands place for the big rocks, and uh, I asked my students what, what the gnome should be called, and they wanted him driving a truck, so... <laughs> there is a uh, truck gnome in his truck, and they certainly uh, love that. And, and the last picture we did um, was, well, I shouldn't say the last, but the next picture. Uh, it was around Halloween time that we were learning this, so, so after we had introduced truck gnome, we got into larger numbers, and again, we stretched them and wrote them out, and uh, obviously you can see it was Halloween time, so I let them decorate um, <laughs> their books. So that's it in a nutshell. Place value in, in uh, my little Walder School here in Philadelphia, the Walder School of Philadelphia, with my second graders. And, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of fun going outside and spending the morning, really most of a morning lesson, um, digging out the rocks, making piles, and then doing math problems with the rocks. And um, we eventually brought them in. We have a, 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 a big basket. I uh, couldn't bring the wheelbarrow into the classroom, but, but we had a big basket of the, of the hundreds rocks and a bucket of the tens rocks, little pouch of the ones rocks, and we had a, a basket of just a few of the thousands place rocks. And, uh, and we used the rocks. We made up mental math problems, we, we drew them, we uh, did a lot of work with, with the concept of place value. And again, it is second grade, so it was done with the intent of introducing the concept, it was not looking for mastery um, in that initial uh, lesson and block of, of the few weeks we worked on place value. Meant to plant seeds, seeds that could sleep and be... Uh, nurtured uh, later on in the school year. Um, so, because we're working with images and stories, the math concept, you might think it would get lost in there, but it doesn't. To reach the intellect at that age, seven and eight years old, you go through the heart and you go through the hands. And the math concept, obviously, we, we eventually moved towards, you know, really just working with the numbers, but I could always refer back to Pouchy you know. I could always refer back if a student was having trouble with, with place value or a harder thing that we expanded to. I can always refer back to the exercise of I am peace, thank you, and being still. So, I hope you found that helpful. And uh, if you need any other suggestions or would like to talk more about what, what I just did here, feel free to go to my website, tappingwithmusic.com. Happy to help with any educational consulting or EFT, or mentoring, or anything else you might need. Thanks for watching. This is Joseph Anthony of TappingWithMusic.com. Take care.